Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I want to look at creating theme templates using Elementor Pro. This post is part four of a series looking at custom post types and the theming functionality of premium page builders. Most of the premium page builders now have the ability to create theme templates, something you used to have to do in PHP. But the process and difficulty and limitations are different for each of the page builders. This series provides a walkthrough of options so you can see what's involved and help you make an intelligent choice of which one you want to use in your projects. In part one, I created a custom post type called Books using custom post type UI and advanced custom fields. In part two, I looked at how to create the single and archive template for the custom post type using the new Divi 4 theme builder. In part three, I looked at the process using Beaver Builder and Beaver Themer. Now, in this video, I want to look at how to create theme templates using Elementor Pro. I have here a test site using the Page Builder framework. If we go back to the dashboard, here I have custom post type UI, which is what I use to create the custom post type and the custom taxonomy. And here I have advanced custom fields, which I use to add fields to the custom post type. Here is the books custom post type that I created, and here's the custom taxonomy. You can see that I've entered some records here, and if we look at one, in addition to the title, the content, the featured image, and the genre, we also have two custom fields here, a link to the author's website and the author's photo. When we go to the front end of the site though, and if we go look at the default archive, we see that that needs some work. And if we look at an individual book record, we see that that needs some work, plus the custom fields associated with the book records aren't showing. So we're going to need to do some theming. Elementor Pro includes a theme builder, which you access through this menu. Here you see we have tabs for theme builder, header, footer, single, and archive templates. We'll click the button to add a new one. And in this dialog, you first select what type of template you want to create. A page, a section, pop-up, header, footer, single, or archive and we'll start creating the single book template. Then we select that we want it for books, and we enter a name, and click Create Template. When you first come into the editor, it gives you some options to use some pre-designed layouts, but we're gonna build ours from scratch. Here we are in the empty Elementor editor. Just a quick tour, here we have some settings, and the ability to exit out of the editor back to the dashboard. This button here returns us to the list of all of the widgets. Here we have the publish button and an option to save a draft, set some display conditions, or save what we're creating as a template. This isn't necessarily a page template, but might be a section that you would include in other content. Here you have a preview button, an option to go into responsive mode, a button to access the history, a section navigator, and a page settings option here. I found that when creating templates, it's always a good idea to go into the settings first and make sure that you've selected the preview options that you want to use in the editor. So here they're pre-selected for us. We have a book and it selected a book that we're going to see. So let's go back to the list of widgets. This takes us back into the display where we can choose pre-designed templates. And here we can select a row layout. When you're working on a row, you can change this as you're going along. But this gives us a head start and we're going to choose a two column layout with a smaller column on the left. Often what happens is you end up without any spacing at the top and our widgets are going to go right up against the header, which doesn't look nice. There are two ways to address that. One is that you can go to the Advanced tab and add some margin to the top. 
The other way is that Elementor comes with a spacer widget, which you can drag in and place where you want to add the spacing that you need. Okay, let's go back to the list of widgets, and we see at the top here, Elementor has chosen for us the most often used widgets for creating a single template. We have the post title, excerpt, content featured image, an author box, comments, post navigation, and post info. So we'll start by adding the featured image in here. Because we've set the preview options, Elementor picks up the featured image of one of the books, and that makes it a lot easier to lay out and style the template. We'll change the size, and we'll center it. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the styling and advanced tabs, but just point out here that all of the widgets have style options and options under the advanced sections. For the featured image, we have some width and max width options. We have some normal and hovering options, opacity, some CSS filters for some advanced stylings, options for border and border radius and box shadow. In the advanced options, we have margin and padding, z-index for layering, some CSS options. We can have motion effects, some background options, border options, some advanced custom positioning, some responsive options for display, whether the widget shows in different screen sizes, some custom attributes and custom CSS areas. We're going to go ahead and continue adding the title, the post info, and the post content. So there we have the bare bones. Again, we have some basic content options. Here, as appropriate, we have some color and typography options. And here we have some layout and display options. You can change the order. You can remove. You can go into some extra settings, add some text before. You can have them be a link and can change the icon if you want to. In the styling tab, we have some spacing and alignment options, the option for a divider between the post meta items, option for color and size of the icon, and some indentation, color, and typography options. So you can see that with Elementor, there are a large number of layout and style options. Let's go ahead and add our custom fields. First, we'll add an image to get the author's photo. You can see that Elementor has a placeholder image here. We'll set it to centered and choose a medium size image. Now we could click here and choose an image from the media library, but since we're creating a template, we want to choose the image from the custom post type record. And to do that, Elementor Pro offers this dynamic feature here. When we click this, we have some dynamic variables that can be used. This isn't the featured image, this isn't the site logo, isn't the author profile picture, but it is an advanced custom field, and Elementor Pro knows that we're using an image widget, so it's offering us the option to use an ACF image field. In order to set the field exactly, we click the wrench icon, and choose the key. If there were more than one field, they would list out here, but we only have the author's photo. Great. If some of our records didn't have an author's photo, we could set a placeholder fallback image here. Next, let's add a button to go to the author's website. So I'll use another Elementor widget, the button widget. And note that we're not limited to just these widgets here. We've already used the image widget, and now we're going to use the button widget. Let's center it. I'm going to skip the icon and styling for now, but let's change the text. 
And again, we're going to go into the dynamic options to choose the link to the author's website. We're not using a default WordPress custom field or the post URL or the archive URL and so on. We're going down to an advanced custom field and again it knows the type of field we're looking for, an ACF URL field. We click the wrench and we choose the field we want. I should point out here that Elementor Pro does not have any conditional display options. For example, if some of the records didn't have a link to the author's website, we wouldn't want to show a button here. However, there's no way to conditionally display this button. There are several third-party add-ons that add conditional display options, but that's not part of Elementor Pro by itself. Now there's a little arrow here, and it doesn't hurt to always check that the display conditions are what you want. And this is correct. We want to show this for books. So we'll save this and close it, which saves it here. We could click here to go take a look. We could click here to preview it. So we'll go and click the hamburger icon, click view the page, and here's our template. We have the title, the post meta, the content, the featured image, and we also have our custom fields, the author's photo, and a link to visit the author's website. Let's test it out, and that works. Here's the website. Now, this is a template, which means the layout should look the same no matter which book record we're looking at. So let's check another one, and yes, the layout is the same. So we successfully created a single template for our custom post type. Now let's go create the template for the archive. The process is the same. We want to go into the Elementor template menu item, click Theme Builder, click Add New, and this time we want to select Archive. We'll give it a name, and click Create Template. Again, we want to create this from scratch, so we'll close that out. And we'll go here and set the type of content that we want to preview. We want this to be a book archive. Now, when you look in the list of widgets, you see that at the top we have some widgets that are used usually in archives. And for our purposes, we have this one here, which is the archive posts widget. So let's go ahead, this time we'll use a single column row, and we'll place the post widget in it. Again, we see we don't have any spacing at the top, so let's add a spacer. And place that above, okay. Now we can see this needs some work. Notice where I just clicked on this, and it took us into the options for that widget. And that usually works, but if it doesn't, you can right-click here and do Edit. And you can see you have the option here to duplicate, to copy, to reset styles, to save the settings you've already added as a global, to go into the navigators where you look at the different sections or to remove it. And these icons here are the column options where you have some options to edit, duplicate, add a column, copy, resize. Again, go into the section navigator or remove it. All right, so let's do some work on this. You have the option of the classic skin or a card. So these are styles or full content, but let's stick with classic for our purposes. This is the number of columns that are gonna show and you can see that there's a little computer monitor icon here. And when you click it, you can see that this is for the desktop, this is for tablet, and this is for mobile. So desktop is three columns, tablet is two, and mobile is one by default. And that suits our purposes. But I wanted to show you where that option is. You have options for the image position, if you want it to be masonry, the image size, the ratio of the image, which is how it's going to display. So I think we're going to need to adjust that some. Let's make this about 1.5 so that we get the full image to show, but that's too big, so let's adjust the width down some. Okay, now we do want the title, and the excerpt length is fine. I'm going to show the excerpt. This is the meta that's showing, and that's okay. 
choosing that separator, which normally I would change that, but it's not a big deal here. We want the read more button. We don't have that many records here. So in this view, there isn't any pagination, but normally you'd want to set your pagination options. And in the advanced section here, you can set a message in case there aren't any records to return. Here, looking at the styling, you can set the spacing and the alignment. You can set some border radius and spacing for the image and some normal and hover options and some advanced display filters. You can style the color and topography and spacing for all the different types of content. You can style the pagination and the nothing found message. And you can adjust the advanced settings also should you need to. But I think what we have here is good. Now, before going to preview this to take a look at it, I wanted to point out that if we wanted to, for instance, include some custom field here, there's no way to do that by default. So that's a little bit of a restriction, although it's not something people ordinarily want to do. Occasionally, people do need to do that. Now, in addition to using the archive posts widget, it is also possible to use the posts widget. So let's just look at that. We're going to remove it. We see it has a query option here. We are looking at books. And what that adds for us is the option to use the categories and tags to filter which posts show up and to change the sort order so you could sort by title instead of date. Another feature here is that you can go in and use a little PHP to create a specialized query if you needed to, for example, include custom field here or some other custom query options. But that's kind of programmer territory and not something that most people would want to tackle. So let's take this out now. And as we've done before, we're going to go in and check the display conditions. And you notice that with the archives, you don't set the condition ahead of time, what it's for. So we'll do that now. And this is going to be for the books archive. So we'll save and close. And now we will go and view the page. And so here's our archive for the custom post type. And it looks good, and it was pretty easy to create. In conclusion, Creating the single and archive templates was easy to do. Both allow the user to see real data when creating templates. This makes a huge difference as it allows the user to style and adjust the layout in real time while working. The single book template made it easy to access the custom fields to show the author's photo and create a link to the author's website. The archive template was also easy to create. All of the Elementor widgets offer a large number of options for layout and styling, more than any other page builder. The archive template options did not provide a way to include custom fields in the archive. Also, Elementor Pro does not have any conditional display options. While it is not every day someone needs to include custom fields in an archive or conditionally display content in templates, if you do need one of those features, it will be frustrating to not have it. In addition to being easy to lay out and style the templates, Elementor Pro has another strength, the large number of third-party add-ons which extend it. The huge number of third-party add-ons dwarfs the number of add-ons available for any other builder. The inability to include custom fields in the archive layout, for example, can be overcome using any one of several Elementor add-ons. Also, almost every add-on pack includes several widgets for displaying content lists, though it should be noted that not all of them support dynamic data. Some of these third-party post-display add-ons offer additional styles, and others offer additional features, such as front-end filtering. Likewise, with conditional display of content, there are a large number of third-party solutions that fill in the gaps. Elementor's ease of use, extensive layout and styling options, and large third-party ecosystem make it the first choice for many site builders. So that's the walkthrough of the Elementor theme builder. I hope you found it useful. Go ahead and take a look at the other articles and videos in the series. Thanks for watching.